This is Find Your Dream Job, the podcast that helps you get hired, have the career you want, and make a difference in life. I'm your host, Mac Pritchard. I'm also the founder of MaxList. It's a job board in the Pacific Northwest that helps you find a fulfilling career. Every Wednesday, I talk to a different expert about the tools you need to get the work you want. Find Your Dream Job is brought to you by Top Resume. Top Resume has helped more than 400,000 professionals land more interviews and get hired faster. Get a free review of your resume today. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. Today's guest has worked with thousands of job applicants. He says the successful ones do three things well. Wouldn't you like to know what they are? And Ricky Ruiz is here to talk about your LinkedIn page, your resume, and you. He's a senior talent acquisition manager at Thesis, a digital agency. Enrique is passionate about finding and attracting the best talent. And he joins us from Portland, Oregon. Well, let's get going, Enrique. You've hired many, many people. And you talk to job seekers all the time. And you say that successful job applicants pay attention to three things, your LinkedIn page, your resume, and you. Why do these three things matter so much? Well, these things are kind of the the pillars of how you are seen in the marketplace. Years ago, it was just your resume and you, where your resume had your work experience and you could just show up at someone's door and say, hey, I'm excited about this job. Hire me. And that's what happened. They hired the person. Usually it was the person that showed up best with the best experience, uh, with the best demeanor and energy. Today, we live in a different, different world. It's a digital world. Today, you have to have the triple threat of having an amazing LinkedIn that is engaging, thoughtful, and honestly, just a good experience for somebody to have. Your resume, we'll talk about it, but having a dual kind of uh, approach to a resume and yourself. Now more than ever, um, you know, kind of COVID being in the rearview mirror, people want to work with people that want to work hard, show up well to work. And honestly, just show up, whether it's virtual, hybrid, or fully um, you know, at the office. People want to work with good, wholesome, hardworking people. So you got to have these three in lockstep. Otherwise, you're going to fall behind in the marketplace of, of job searchers. In your experience, Enrique, do most applicants do all three things well? No, <laughs> is the short answer, Mac. Um it's 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 a lot of work to to a make a resume. I still get people that say, "Look at my resume." The first thing I do is go look at their LinkedIn. <laughs> it's like your LinkedIn is not even there, you know. So um, the quick answer is no. It, it takes a lot of effort to make all three of these things shine. But I think with effort and time put into it, people can really really shine. Um, but it takes it takes a lot of effort. So it takes time. It takes effort. What what are other reasons that might stop uh, candidates from building, say, compelling LinkedIn pages or resumes and personal brands? Yeah. You know, to, in my personal opinion, it just comes down to the space between your two years. Sometimes people just don't want to. People think of LinkedIn, a lot. Not, a, not all people, but a lot of people think of LinkedIn as just another social media website. Mm, there's some truth to that. But the reality, whether you like it or not, whether you're more green in your career or you've been around for a while, LinkedIn is your first digital impression to the world without you being there, right? When we were younger, Mac, we had to go to conferences, had our have our cards, and we had to step outside our comfort zone and go talk to people and say, hey, I think I would be a good person at your company, right? And you had to be bold and make good energy vibe with other people, right? That And that impression that you left when that person went back to their office and went through their little Rolodex of people they met, who they're going to call, who they're going to hire, the impression that you left is that's what they remembered, right? That's the person that they called first. And hopefully you were that person. Today, that digital first impression comes via LinkedIn. That's just the hard truth. Whether you like it or not, how... You, how your LinkedIn shows up to the world tells people how you show up in general. Now, it's not gospel. I mean, I know it's 
great people are out there that don't have LinkedIn's. I get it. But I'm in the world where I hire people every week. So if your LinkedIn and your resume and your how you show up in an interview don't match up, it just throws it off. Well, we're going to walk through each of those areas and how to do them well. Before we do that, uh, what mistakes do you see applicants make uh, with LinkedIn pages, resumes, and and how they show up personally? Yeah, good question. You know, first, your your resume. I think a lot of times people are overthinking the resume. I'm a big believer, just like in design, less is more, right? So you want to have uh, a solid, really nice resume. I always recommend to the people that I work with, whether it's a mentee or someone I'm working with outside of work, I say, listen, you got to have two resumes. One for just being able to throw it into an applicant tracking system, which is usually where it goes when you apply online to a company. Um, and two, when you show up or you know who you're going to meet with, you have a nicer looking resume. So you got to have two. Sometimes people just don't want to do it. They just make whatever resume they want and they that's what they put in the machine of ATS or the, the resume they send in. That's a, That's their choice. I get it. But I think you should have two, right? One that is good for the ATS and one that is good to show up in person or via email when you're going to interview. So one mistake around the resumes is not having a dual threat resume. LinkedIn's, honestly, it's just lack of effort. If you don't have a robust uh, resume built out, I mean, you could add me on LinkedIn and tell me, hey, Enrique, what are your tips for my LinkedIn? And I'll give you my little breakdown of what, do these things right now. It takes like an hour. Um, there's so many things LinkedIn can you can do within LinkedIn to optimize your profile so that you just look a little better. It's like showing up to a wedding in like a nice suit rather than like shorts and like, you know, sandals. Uh, I prefer the suit. <laughs> uh, and then the in-person, you know, I think post-COVID times, you want to show up. If it's a virtual interview, you want to show up well. Just how you coached me for this interview, Mac. Quiet space, good lighting, all the things, right? Making sure that when they, when someone experiences you, they experience a good, good person, like virtually. Sometimes I got to tell you, Mac, when I'm talking to somebody virtually and I'm looking up their nose at a cafe shop with noisy things in the background, I get it. You know, I understand, I have empathy for people's situations 100%, but it's a 30 minute interview, you know, like, make the time to have me experience you well. Um, so yeah, you want to have that good experience virtually as well. Um, and if you're in person, just, you know, take care of yourself, <laughs> like shower, shave, put some decent things on and show up really well with really positive energy, right? It's like the basics. So if you can't get the basics down, it's going to be tough to be the person when the hiring committee's deciding, Hmm, who do we want to spend for like 40 hours a week with, right? Is it the person that showed up well with really good energy, positive attitude, or the person that like just didn't have a good, you know, energy to them, complained about past employers, all these things that just don't sit well. Um, those are some of the mistakes. All right. Well, let's walk through the the positive steps you can take in each of these three areas. And let's start with LinkedIn. Some of this, I think you, you, you've you touched on, Enrique, which is great. Uh, but I, I know that your, your big piece of advice here when it comes to LinkedIn is to engage with every LinkedIn feature. Now, that mm -hmm. can sound overwhelming. Can you break that down for us and tell us what you have in mind here? Yes. So if if you see it on LinkedIn, you know, from the banner to your picture, um, to your kind of bio, to everything within your work history, to your skills, anything that you can add to your LinkedIn, you need to do it. You need to add it because at the, if I'm certain, I mean, I, I recruit, I source a lot <laughs> when I'm sourcing, sometimes I'll try to like say, all right, I'm going to go to the last resulting page in my search, right? Instead of the first, I'll start backwards uh, just, you know, to kind of switch it up. Uh, the last couple pages on my LinkedIn search is literally blank, blank profiles. So somehow they popped into the search because of something, but they're blank. No pictures, no details, no work history, no nothing. 
So then I'm like, ah. So then I got to click, 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 click through to find the like more robust profiles. So if you're not adding, you know, the expression, the meat to the bone, then you're not going to show up. The algorithm of LinkedIn is not going to propel you to the top of the search. It's going to propel you to the bottom. So everything from the banner to the picture to the skills within your um, your profile to the keywords that you are looking to to get in the new job you're looking for or the transferable skills that you currently have that will take you to that next job, those keywords need to be peppered all over your profile, all over it. Because recruiters like me are searching for those keywords. We're looking for the skills, the unique skills, the differentiating skills that set you apart. And if I plug that keyword in you, and it's not on your LinkedIn profile anywhere, you won't pop up for me. I won't see you. You're invisible. Let's pause there, Enrique. I, we're going to take a break. Uh, when we come back, I want to continue this conversation about how to make the most of, of LinkedIn. Stay with us. When we return, Enrique Ruiz will continue to share his advice on your LinkedIn page, your resume, and you. Are you ready to upgrade your resume? Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. The experts at Top Resume will look at your resume for free. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. Get tips you can use right away to improve your resume on your own. Or hire Top Resume to do it for you. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. Now, let's get back to the show. We're back in the MaxList studio. I'm talking with Enrique Ruiz. He's a senior talent acquisition manager at Thesis, a digital agency. Enrique is passionate about finding and attracting the best talent, and he joins us from Portland, Oregon. Now, Enrique, before the break, we were talking about the three things that you uh, say matter most to recruiters like you, your LinkedIn page, your resume, and how you show up, you, your personal brand. We were talking about LinkedIn and, and you touched on the importance of algorithms and keywords and why they matter so much when uh, hiring managers like you are doing searches. Um, how do you recommend listeners take into consideration those algorithms when they're filling out the page as you've instructed? One thing I tell the people I get to work with, whether it's college students or people I mentor, um, is you have to, you know, be really honest with yourself and kind of break it down on a piece of paper and put down all of the skills you engage with during your working day. Literally from the time you clock in to the time you clock out, what do you do? And you break it down on a piece of paper. Those are the skills um, that you have to put on your LinkedIn that have to do with your current job. Now, a lot of people are looking for that next job. Well, LinkedIn right now, when you go to jobs, you search your job in locations, you'll see jobs and you'll see the skills needed for that job. So whoever posted that job is saying, hey, these are the skills we are looking for, for this specific job. And it'll tell you on the little screen, check mark if you have it, X if you don't, right? So in your breakdown, assessing yourself, if you don't have those skills put on your own LinkedIn or your resume, then the algorithm is not going to push um, jobs that fit your skill set to you. I mean, it does a lot of work for you. Like it's helping you see things that are going to be good for. I get messages all the time, and I'm like, hmm, interesting. And now more than ever, because I hone it in, I'm like, hmm, that does kind of see inter interesting job. But nah, I'm good, right? So for a job searcher, you're you need to look at that job, that future job, and see within your skills the transferable skills that sometimes are even. I would say synonymous with the skills that they're looking for, for that future job. Like, oh, I do that in a different way. Okay. We'll put that in so that it fits the word so that if you do get an interview, you're able to speak to it, those transferable skills, right? So that is a little bit of a, you know, takes up time, takes up energy. But if you connect your world of skills to your resume and LinkedIn so that that future job can fit within that realm, 
oh my gosh, it, it's just a little bit of a easier search, I would say. Um, but you got to pepper the skills all over your LinkedIn. The more you pepper them around your LinkedIn, in your bio, your skills, your background, your work history, the more that that word is going to pop populate in the results for someone like me. And when I see those <laughs> those little words highlighted in yellow, I'm like, ooh, Mac has a lot of skills in podcasting. I'm gonna I'm gonna call Mac because I'm hiring a podcaster, right? I'm gonna reach out to him. So that's kind of the the LinkedIn approach I have that I would tell people. I want to get to resumes, but one more question about LinkedIn. How important is it for you as a recruiter to see that candidates have created original content on LinkedIn? I'm thinking of posts or articles or, or other material. Does that matter? It doesn't matter to the job. Like if I'm hiring, a, you know, someone that is, I don't care the job. Like I don't really care if you're, if you have like amazing posts. I just want to see your experience, like your skills, your breakdown of how you represent yourself. Some of your posts I'll check out. Maybe I'll, you know, if you're a copywriter, I might go, if you have a portfolio, if you're a designer, check out your portfolio. Hopefully everything that you, that you um, have to offer, whether it's uh, a copywriting portfolio, design portfolio, uh, a website that you might have for yourself, I should be able to easily get to it from your LinkedIn, from anywhere that's digital. The post, I don't think it matters to like the job. I think it's more, I need to get to your skills, background, and what qualifies you for the job I'm hiring for quickly. <laughs> I don't want to like dig around for it. I'm, you need to make it easy. I mean, this sounds selfish, Mac, but you need to make it easy for me to see you. Well, let's talk about the second of the three items you say matter when uh, recruiters are looking for candidates. The first was your LinkedIn page. The second is your resume. And in the first segment, you talked about the importance of having two resumes, one for uh, the applicant tracking system, another for an interviewer when you're actually meeting someone either virtually or in person. Why is it important to have two resumes? Tell us more about that. It's It really comes down to the applicant tracking system. For those listeners that may not know, an applicant tracking system is what companies use to literally track the people that apply to those jobs. There's a, a plethora of avenues that co companies can choose. Usually when you apply to a job, and I see the memes on LinkedIn all the time, like, oh, I apply to the job and I still have to fill in my my work experience. It's kind of like a, a meme out there. Um, but I think most companies, when you apply to the job, if you put it through an applicant tracking system and if your resume is like very basic, you know, just your name, <laughs> phone number, email, work history, companies you work for, how long you work for them. That's the easiest way for a robust applicant tracking system to intake your resume so that it can use it, so that it can create a profile for you so that the recruiter or hiring manager can see you, right? So that's one. Like the basic one is the easy one. You can go to like Google or anywhere and get basic resumes. Uh, don't pay like anybody for like basic, <laughs> basic resume creation. Um the other one, again, it plays into, I think, how um, prepared someone might be for a certain situation of an interview, right? So your basic one is for the applicant tracking system. Boom, that's going that way. Your other one, that's where you have a little bit more uh, design or more, a little bit more of a look to your resume. That one, sa same information and data, it's just looks a little nicer. That's the resume. Once you know you're going to meet with um, you know, the hire a hire manager virtually, and you got their you got the calendar invite, the emails are there. That's what you send the day before, maybe a couple hours before that interview to that email saying, Hey, hey Enrique, excited to meet with you. And in case you haven't, you know, in case you don't have it, here's my resume again. Attach it, boom. And it's like, oh, okay, I got the resume there, also in the applicant tracking system. And they have your LinkedIn pulled up, and all these things combine are saying the same kind of things. It's like, oh, okay, you get a picture of the person quickly. And sometimes you don't even have to look at all three. You just look at one because you know they're all kind of singing the same song. Well, the third part that you say matters when candidates are, are looking for work after the LinkedIn and the resume is how you show up your personal brand, you. 
Tell us yeah. more about that, Enrique. What what do you, you talked a little bit about this again in the first segment? What do you have in mind here? When and and how do candidates who do this well stand out? Yeah, I mean, I could tell you horror stories of what not to do, um, but you know, today, since you know, since COVID, I don't think the world is going to be the same. Kind of. I mean, this sounds tough topic to bring up, but it's like since nine eleven, the world was never the same, right? Everything changed. We have the TSA now, and we all go through it, right? Since COVID, the working world is never going to be the same. It's kind of like telling somebody, you know, when you tell your kids that once they figure out that Santa Claus isn't real, like you can't go back and tell that kid, like, hey, just, just actually, it, he is real. Like, no, you can't go back to making a kid believe Santa Claus is real. Same thing here. Now more than ever, employers are hiring people, full-time employees with just di- virtual experiences with the person. And I promise you, Mac, the person that's getting hired is the person that shows up really well skills-wise and shows up virtually really well. People, I don't care if you're virtual, hybrid, fully coming into the office, people are humans. They still want to work with people that are pleasant, that are hardworking, that are engaging that are wholesome. If you if you don't show up well in an in-person interview or a virtual interview, you're not going to be the person they think about when they're debriefing. You're going to be the person that they don't talk about, that they don't hire. Simple things, camera, lighting, sound, energy, research on the company, asking asking good questions, Mac, during the interview, paying attention during the interview. I had five interviews yesterday half of them only half of them didn't ask any questions at the end. And I don't think I'm doing like a stellar job at like breaking everything down. Like you just have, you have to come with questions. You have to be prepared. It's kind of like going on a first date. You want to go on a first date. You want to leave an impression. You want people to want to go on a second date. If people don't want to go on a second date with you after you interview in your first virtual interview, good luck. It's, it's just tough. It's a tough market. And again, I have empathy for people. I'm always going to err on the side of, understanding, empathy, you know, life happens, people, you know, they don't have childcare, they have a dog or this or that sound in the background. I get it. I understand. And I will have a lot of empathy, but you gotta, you gotta put your best foot forward and be best prepared as much as you can. It's been a great conversation, Enrique. Now tell us what's next for you. Well, for me, you know, I, I get the privilege of being, um, the person kind of, helping run recruiting for for thesis uh the digital marketing agency here in portland and we're actually uh building a new office uh kind of in downtown portland and i'm just really excited about it it's going to be our own office currently we we rent out some space which is awesome um but new building kind of new thesis and we're just really excited so um people that are interested in you know jobs in the in the creative space definitely add me on linkedin and if you're listening around the world um you know thesis is definitely looking to partner with clients that want to work with a digital marketing agency that is you know into humanizing the brands that it works with we work with global brands big and small and yeah if you're if you're a person out there and your company's looking for uh to partner with a digital marketing agency definitely Add me on LinkedIn and I can help connect the dots. We'll be sure to include your LinkedIn uh, URL in the show notes and the website article so that people can re- uh, connect with you in regain. Cool. And if they do reach out, I hope they'll mention they heard you on Find Your Dream Job. Now, Enrique, we covered a lot of ground uh, <laughs> given all the, the advice you shared today. Mm. What's the, the top thing, the one thing you want a listener to remember about your LinkedIn page? your resume, and you? You know, the biggest thing is that it's doable. Like all the things are there for you to engage with. The challenge I put out to people or the call to action is right now, if you're listening to this, look at your phone. Look at your screen time on your phone, okay? On your screen time today and this last week, how much time are you spending on your phone? Look at your top apps. You know, if those top apps are not are not kind of vessels to to use for investment in you, 
I kind of, you know, push back a little bit and say, hey, listen, if you're spending six hours a day on stuff, that's just stuff, give me half of that time. Give me three hours and invest it. One hour on your resume, one hour on your LinkedIn, and one hour on going to like the store and getting some nicer clothes and, you know, do what you got to do to clean yourself up so you can show up well for in-person virtual things. I'm not saying give me all the time because, you know, I watch my share of shows and have fun too. But give me half of that time and invest it, invest it in you um, because you're all you got. Make sure you never miss an episode of Find Your Dream Job. Subscribe to our free podcast newsletter. You'll get information about our guests and transcripts of every show. Go to maxlist.org slash newsletters. Again, that's maxlist.org slash newsletters. Next week, our guest will be Octavia Gorodima. She's a career coach and the author of Prep, Push, Pivot, Essential Career Strategies for Underrepresented Women. You accept a new job. You sign a contract. And then the employer withdraws the offer. Join us next Wednesday when Octavia Gorodima and I talk about what to do if your job offer is rescinded. Until next time, thanks for letting us help you find your dream job. This show is produced by Max List. Susan Thornton Hoff schedules our guests and writes our newsletter. Lisa Kislinberry Anderson manages our social media. Our sound engineer is Matt Fiorillo. Ryan Morrison at Podfly Productions edits the show. Dawn Mole creates our transcripts, and our music is by Freddie Trujillo. This is Mac Pritchard. See you next week. <laughs>